Today on Crawl Walk Strum, I'm going to show you the three easiest chords to learn first. Let's strum. You were starting to crawl, and then you wanted to walk, and then you wanted to rock, so you picked up your guitar, and then you started to strum. Crawl, walk, strum. Hey, friendly strummers, I'm Maxfield. If this is your first time here, don't forget to stage dive the subscribe button so you don't miss a thing. Crawl Walk Strum is a guitar learning method that I've developed with hundreds of students over the past 20 years. Designed to take you from your first strum to the big show. Today we're talking about chords. So what are chords? Whenever you play a single note, you're getting just a single sound. Anytime you play more than one note at the same time, that's harmony, that's a chord. It could be two, three, four, five, or all the notes. Either way though, it just means more than one note at the same time. In the real world, we use the word harmony to describe things like, let's work together in harmony for a desirable result. However, you could also argue that when people are fighting battles and wars amongst each other, that's working in harmony to create a negative result. So working in harmony doesn't always mean a good or bad thing. When two people are fighting, you might say that it's kind of chaotic or dissonant. This is the same with music. So here's a chord called G, which we're going to be learning today. It's just a nice sounding chord. Every note is working together. But if I were to just accidentally move one finger over, you can hear that it just has a quality to it that is unpleasant maybe, or maybe you like that. It could be useful if you're trying to create suspense. But for the most part, I'd prefer my G to sound like this. In music, we have two main kinds of chords that comprise of major or minor. Now these two chords are basically the foundation for every single popular song you've ever heard. Even though there could be other chords also, these are really the two main chords. I would argue that major and minor both work in harmony perfectly and achieve exactly what they're set out to do. Major, some people will say, is a bit brighter or happier sounding. Minor, they will say, is a little bit darker or sadder sounding. I personally don't see it that way, although I can understand why you might. To me, they both sound powerful and strong and just important tools for the job. When we play chords like a G major chord or an A minor chord, Another name for these types of major or minor chords is a triad because these chords are comprised of just three specific notes working together. Now because the guitar is such a big instrument with so many different frets and different places to play the same notes, we're going to have to understand that there's going to be many, many different ways to play the exact same chords. The differences between these chords is usually called voicings. So, we're going to learn the easiest three voicings right now for your first three chords. The first chord we're going to learn is the open G voicing. This is a really easy chord. We use our third finger, our ring finger, on the third fret on the first string. Now we're also going to strum strings three, two, and one. So we strum them all. Then we get a G chord. Now what we want to make sure to do is what's called an arpeggio so we can test the chord. An arpeggio is where you play the notes of the chord one at a time. So rather than strumming all of them, we go string three, string two, string one. We want to make sure we can hear all three of those notes. It's very easy for this finger to accidentally just brush up against the second string, at which point the second string will become muted. If I strum this whole chord like this, it might sound okay, but when we arpeggiate it, we see we're missing a note. So I just want to really make sure that I'm using the very tips of my fingers curled straight down at the guitar, right on the edge of the fret. And for those of us who were still confused about the frets, the frets are these metal lines going all the way down the neck. So here we go, we have our G chord, fret three, string one. Now I've provided an exercise here for us to go over this chord. Okay, so I have it up on the screen, our exercise here. What you're gonna see is three staves of music. 
On these three staves, each of them has four bars or measures. You can see the lines, I'm highlighting them now. So on the first stave, we have four G chords to strum and each of them gets four counts. These are called whole notes. So we strum it, one, two, three, four. On the second stave, you can see that each bar now has two chords in it. So now the four beats that were previously allocated to only one chord are divided into two different chords. So we're gonna strum one, two, three, four. On the final stave, each bar has four notes to strum because they are quarter notes. So each one gets one count. One, two, three, four. So as we go through this exercise, it's gonna feel like it's getting faster, but it's actually the same speed. It's just that we're putting more information into each bar as we go. Let's give it a try. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Strum, two, three, four. Strum, two, three, four. Strum, two, now it's half notes. Strum, two, strum, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Quarter notes. One, two, three, four. Strum, 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 strum. Good job, that's our first chord. Our second chord is gonna be a C major chord or triad. For this chord, we're gonna take our first finger and we're gonna put it on fret one on string number two. This one's trickier because you have the string underneath the finger on string one that needs to be open and you have the string above on string three which also needs to be open. So if our first finger that's fretting fret one on string two is at all sloppy or messy and brushes up against either of those other strings, it's gonna make it so that we don't hear all three notes and so therefore it's not a perfect triad. So we're gonna arpeggiate and see if we have the chord. Okay, so I'm noticing that this part of my finger isn't quite perpendicular with the guitar, so we wanna be coming straight down on that fret to make sure that we can hear that first string. So now we listen again. There we go. So now we're gonna go through with the C chord the same way we went with the G chord. So we're gonna be doing whole notes for four measures, half notes for four measures, and quarter notes for four measures. Let's try. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Four. One, two, half notes now. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, quarter notes. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Good job, that was our C chord. Now our third chord is gonna be our first minor chord. Now this chord is almost exactly the same as our C chord. We still hold finger one on fret one, but now we're gonna also add our middle finger, which is called finger two, on fret two on string number three. So now we have two fingers that could be problematic because finger two could accidentally brush against string two underneath it and finger one could accidentally brush against string one underneath it. So here, for example, I have my finger two, then the finger one should sound like this, but if my finger two was a little bit sloppy, 
it would mute that string. So once again, make sure we're pointing our fingers directly at the strings, coming straight down on them without brushing against the other strings or leaning against them. So our A minor chord, if we arpeggio, will sound like this. And if we strum it, it'll sound like this. Let's do the same exercise that we just did with our G major and C major chords, but with the A minor chord. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, half note time. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, quarter notes. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Hold. For the next section, we're going to combine these chords. So this is where it gets tricky, and this is one of the parts where you're probably not going to be able to play along with the backing track today. You might want to slow it down in the corner with the settings where you can change the playback speed to 0.5 so you can have a little more time to switch. This is one that you probably want to go over and pause right now before you actually play along with the track. We need to start getting used to the idea that each one of our chords has a specific finger or combination that we want to memorize. So on this one, we're starting with our G chord. The next one is gonna be our C chord. So I wanna be thinking already that my first finger is gonna be starting to get ready for that C chord, but not actually pressing yet. So we have G, then I put my first finger down on C. As I put it there, I take the G note off just a little bit. I try not to go like way too far away from the guitar. I just, just lift it up so it's not being used anymore. So we have our G. Then we have our C, as I press, I lift up the other one. Then I pivot back to G. With the same kind of fingering mechanics. Now when I go to A minor, I have to put two fingers down. That's probably a harder switch. Then we go from G for two counts to C to two counts, G for two counts, A minor for two counts. So this particular exercise has G going to C, G going to A minor, C goes to G, A minor goes to G. You can see how just three chords actually gives you six possibilities of orders between them. Let's try this exercise. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, half note time, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, quarter note time, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, That one was tough, but good job. Now for our last exercise of today, we're going to play the song Riptide, which was made famous by Vance Joy a couple years ago. It's still quite popular. This song's really easy and shows that you only need three chords to write a hit song. And those three chords happen to be the three chords we just learned, so this is perfect. This song is really easy. It goes four strums of A minor. One, two, three, four. Then we have four strums of G. One, two, three, four. Then we have eight strums of C. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. You'll notice that instead of counting to eight, I still just counted to four, but I counted to it twice. This is because each bar in this song, or each measure, has four counts because we're in standard four, four time. Let's give it a try. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. 
again. One, two, three, four. 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 One, two, one more time. Well, that wraps up today's lesson of Crawl, Walk, Strum. If you got value out of this lesson, don't forget to stage dive the subscribe button and pick slide the like. If you have any questions or comments or ideas for future episodes, please leave them below. Until next time, happy strumming and... Crawl, walk, strum.